Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to 10 Minute Tasting. I'm Adam Hanover, store manager at Rose Wharf in downtown Boston. You are behind the line at my store today. Me and my guest, district manager Adam Modzell from the Back Bay. We're here behind the line today rather than sitting down at a table because instead of a coffee tasting, we're going to be practicing some basic latte art skills. Now, some really exciting news just came out yesterday. Barista Championships is back on this year. Coming soon. Really excited about that. Adam was my mentor last year as I went through my process of becoming the Area 72 Barista Champion. I'm really excited about that. It was great great experience for me. However, one of the new rules this year, hourly partners only are eligible. As a store manager, I'm no longer eligible, which means Area 72 will be crowning a new barista champion this year. Very exciting. I hope it's one of you watching. I hope it's one of my partners so we can keep this title right in Rose Ward. However, we're bringing it to the back page. <laughs> You're going to have the champion every year, right? So what we're doing this year is a little bit different. We're going to have a store level competition before we get to the district level. And the scoring for the store level competition is based 100% on your flat white skills. So today, I'm going to be showing some basic flat white skills finish the flat white with a dot, then we're going to show the basic heart. Uh, about a month from now, Adam's going to come back and we're going to teach advanced latte art, we're going to teach a tulip, we're going to teach a rosetta, and see how far his skills have come. So, Adam, as a district manager, was a former store hourly partner, That's right. is a coffee master, Yep. he spent a lot of hours on bar, but all of it before we started making latte art. Also true. So Adam does not quite have the latte art skills. I'm hoping that That's within the next 10 to 12 minutes, Adam will be a latte art master. How do you feel about that? I, hey, I, I'm, my fingers are crossed. I know I have a good teacher. I'm in good hands. I'd say this is, a, this is a dream come true for me. When I was a barista, I dreamed of barista championships. And now I don't get to participate. So at least I get to learn from the master. You know, I saw on social media yesterday, Starbucks partners getting out there, the fact that the applications are now live. I saw a lot of comments on their Instagram feed saying, I'd love to do this, but I feel a little embarrassed. I don't really know latte art skills. Hey. In the next 10 to 12 minutes, you are going to learn all the latte art skills that you need to get yourself started and start practicing some basic, some basic latte art skills on your flat ones. So what do you say, should we get started? Let's do it. All right. First, I want to talk about some basics of the steaming pitchers that are specific to Starbucks. If you go to an independent coffee shop, you're most likely to see this type of steaming pitcher right here. You'll notice that it's very narrow on the top and the decorating tip here is very sharp. Take a look at our steaming pitcher as opposed to it. Ours is narrow on the bottom, wider at the top. The weight distribution is a little bit different. It's top heavy. It makes it a little bit difficult to pour out of our pitchers. You'll also notice the decorating tip is wider. It's not as fine. It makes it a little bit difficult to make those crisp cuts in your latte art. Because of that, some of the skills that I'm going to be teaching today for the flat white are very specific to Starbucks and very specific to Starbucks steaming pitchers themselves. If you want to learn how to make really good latte art, it's very important to learn the basics of our steaming pitchers first. Because if you pick up one of the YouTube to tutorials that are one to two minutes long on how to pour a rosetta, they're great tutorials, but they use this pitcher, and if you try to use those specific skills, you're gonna end up with kind of a floppy mess, and you're gonna be really frustrated. I wanna make sure that you learn the right way, that you learn how to put the best hearts, the best rosettas on top of your flat whites as possible. So let's get started with the basic flat white. <laughs> First thing you should be aware of is don't over pour your milk. If you over pour the milk, you're gonna end up with too much as you're trying to pour the drink and you're not gonna be able to get that defined design on top of it. So what we're gonna do here, you wanna make sure that you steam your milk correctly as well. We all know the recipe standard is two to three seconds for a flat white for aeration. Now, if you start by trying to aerate right off the bat, you're gonna end up making go. Once you hear that sound, you're done. You've already created too much airy foam. What you want to do is start with the steaming tip completely submerged in the milk, and as it starts steaming, slowly bring it down. And that's enough aeration right there. Just a couple of seconds of aeration. Now, when I pull my shots into the cup, you notice I have my cup on an angle. It's going to allow the espresso to roll down the side of the cup, and when it comes out, you're going to see that the crema is in a perfect pattern on the top to create a nice palette for me to pour the milk in. What you're also going to see me do here as my milk is done, I'm swirling the pitcher a little bit. This is what we call grooming the milk. 
and you'll notice if you groom the milk correctly for about five or six seconds, you see how glossy that comes out, kind of like a mirror on top? It looks like glass. That's gonna give you the right type of foam to make your flat white look really good. Now, you can also see, after I swirl my espresso, the crema forms a perfect top, perfect crust on top. Now I've got a really good palette for pouring in my flat white. I wanna go medium height, nice and slow, right? Keep that crema rising to the top. And as I get most of the way to the top, I'm gonna to drop my pitcher slow. And you see that dot starting to form? Now I've got my absolutely perfect flat white dot right on top. So let's go, thank you, Adam. So let's go over a couple of the basics that I just went through. You'll notice, aerate the milk two to three seconds. Make sure your aeration is at the very beginning of steaming. The reason for this is the protein in milk is most malleable at colder temperatures. Once the milk gets too hot, that protein's not gonna separate and create the right glossy foam. You wanna make sure you're aerating right at the beginning and not for too long. The reason is this flat white uses a, a very creamy foam. Um, you're going to end up with meringue-like foam in a latte, but what you want here is very dense foam. You want it nice and velvety. You can see on the top of this beverage right here, if I stick my finger in it and ruin it, obviously, <laughs> you'll see the foam that I'm pulling up is very, is very dense. <laughs> this makes a very good flat one. So now, I'm going to have my associate, Adam, mirror what I just did. He's going to make himself a nice flat white here. I'm gonna certainly try. And I'm gonna talk you through what Adam's doing here as he as he works. So someone's just rejoined someone just joined in and they asked what we're talking about, so maybe you can just give a quick recap. Yeah. So right now we're working on the basics of a flat white and how to create the right components to make your velvety foam and the perfect flavor of the drink. So Adam is making sure he pours to the tall line for the cup. Tall line. Alright. He's Adam, somebody to... says, I love DM Adam. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> so he's going to start with the steaming fully tip submerged. in, fully submerged in the milk, and then he's going to gradually pull down until he hears the aeration sound. About two to three seconds, he's going to pull it back up and let it sit. Now we're going to pull two ristretto shots for a tall, and you'll notice again, he's letting the ristretto shots pull down the side of the cup and kind of collect in the bottom. That's going to allow the, the espresso to cool in the bottom and create a nice layer of crema on the very top of the drink. Melissa, uh, Adam, Melissa says go Adam. Yeah, <laughs> go both Adam. That's right, team Adam today. So uh, you'll see so Adam's Adam grooming the milk nice and well. He's got a good glossy foam starting on top there. Like a, like a can of paint. Now you'll notice where Adam's fingers are on here. Adam's fingers his thumb and his forefinger are pinching the very top of this pitcher. In just a moment, when I show you how to make the heart, you'll understand why that's important. So don't forget that piece right there. All right, here we go. So Adam's pouring nice and slow from a medium height. You'll notice the crema rising to the top of the cup as the milk goes pours through and into the bottom of the cup. As he's about three quarters full, he'll drop down and start creating that dot on top. Look at how perfect that turned out. What do you think? Oh. District manager, Adam Odzell. How do you do? It looks has, delicious. Great job. He Comment from the field. He has main bar partner since before we introduced the flat white. <laughs> On his first try after learning some of the basics, he's created a picture-perfect awesome. flat white for our partners. Great job, Adam. Even Hakeem's impressed. I'm yeah. very impressed. I feel as though Adam is ready to move on to another design. Let's try it. How about we show now I'm feeling the confident. basics of creating actual latte art on top of the cup instead of just a dot. This is the beginner. This is the perfect recipe. However, showing mastery as a barista is about being able to show your control over the pitcher as you pour, your control over the milk. There's a couple of little tweaks that end up happening to our pour as we try to put the heart on top of the cup. So as you saw before, I mentioned the difference in size of the pitchers. If I were pouring a heart from this pitcher here, I could keep this cup flat because since it's so narrow at the top, the pitcher can go all the way in, right? In order to decorate on the top of your flat white, you need the decorating tip of your steaming pitcher right up against the milk. You need to be very, very close to get that pattern going. However, this steaming pitcher is much more narrow than this steaming pitcher. So in order to get this decorating tip right up against the milk, I have to tip the cup. Okay, so that's one thing that you're gonna see me do. I'm gonna go to about a 45 degree angle the espresso is going to be kind of touching the side of the cup. And as I start to pour, 
you're going to see me pour directly in the middle and wiggle back and forth in the middle and gradually the cup, not the pitcher, is going to move. As the milk starts to fill the cup more and more, I'm going to move the cup closer and closer to flat and that's going to allow the tip of the steaming pitcher to stay right up against the top of the milk. So let's give it a shot right now. Now again, I'm going to start fully submerged and pull out just briefly here, come back down. Now as my shots come in, remember I pointed out the fact that Adam was pinching the top of this pitcher. That has to do with the weight distribution of the pitcher. The bottom heavy pitchers that you find at uh, an independent coffee shop make it very, very easy because of the weight distribution to get the right angle here. However, with our steaming pitchers, they'll dangle all over the place. If I take an extra one here, if I'm just holding down here, it, it dangles loosely. If I pinch the top and get more top control over the top heavy, I have more control over how I'm going to be pouring. So now, again, what you'll see after I groom this milk, I may have let the milk sit a little bit too much to get a perfect heart, but you'll still be able to see generally the pour that I'm going for here. I'm going to groom it a little bit extra long to make sure it gets glossy again. Now again, I'm tipping, tipping my cup and I'm pouring directly into the center. Same speed that I did before. Now I'm going to start about halfway through. I'm going to start wiggling back and forth. Get it nice and wide and then cut right at the end. And there's a heart right on top. It's, an, it's a small heart, but there's your heart. So the key is here. When you put the dot on top, you notice Adam's dot as well as my dot was real small right in the middle of the cup. For the heart, you want to make it take a little bit more of the cup. So what you're going to do, instead of just dropping the pitcher, you're going to wiggle back and forth when you drop the pitcher to make the foam spread out a little bit more. And that way, as the cup comes down, all you have to do is cut up. You don't want to cut across because cutting across is going to make you spill down the side of the cup. You want to cut up because cutting up suctions in the top and creates the top part of that heart and it'll drag a teeny tiny tail at the bottom that creates a perfect heart. So Adam, why don't you give it one more try and see how many takes you have to feel take his confidence. Uh, I, have to be <laughs> I am actually very confident in Adam's ability to do this. I know he's watched me go through practice for Barista Championships numerous yeah, times. That, like, I have a feeling he's going to know exactly <laughs> where he's coming from with this. He's a know. ringer. He's secretly... He's, I'm a little nervous. My heart's beating a little fast. Woo. All right, here we go. There's a lot of pressure. I got this out. Good steam. Now you notice the sound that Adam got from that steaming. You got that tearing paper sound that we looked for. You didn't get a lot of bubbling or foaming. It doesn't sound like a witch's cauldron. It just sounds like a nice paper tear. A witch's cauldron. Yeah, you know, <laughs> bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Is that... <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see. for me I'm getting too <laughs> oh. okay so Adam started to get a little bit too high in the cup before he started his wiggle but that's okay uh. you could see he was able to bring all the crema right to the top of the cup and we did get some of the wispiest uh, wispy foam on the top that we would be looking for so when I started too late started a little bit too late with the wiggle you got an oh no from the sorry. field. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I disappointed everyone. Nice try show, though. Nice I'm going to show one more time. This time I'm not really going to talk through it. I'm just going to concentrate on making my best heart. Someone said that was a nice Z. <laughs> it wasn't a Z. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was shooting for. It was a Z. Zora, you know? I'm going to show Adam directly my heart without really talking through it. And that way he's going to get to see exactly about what point I start cutting it. And then I'm going to have him try one more time. Karen, are we getting any questions through? Um, if we do, I'll let you know. We get a lot of comments, though. Excellent. We got Glad a couple. We got a couple interested. comments that you guys are pretty cute. Aww. So 
Those are our favorite comments. Yes, exactly. Keep the cute comments coming. Although if they say Adam is cute, I don't really know. <laughs> Clearly they're talking about this one. <laughs> That's all right. Someone's watching from the Philippines. Shout out to the Philippines. Wow. Wow. Hello, Philippines. There we go. Beautiful heart right on top. See, I cut up instead of cutting across. It allows me to suck in the sides here and allows a little bit of a tail to form on the bottom. Perfect heart. Perfect heart. Someone just wrote that. Perfect heart, just as you said. Nice. Adam, I know you got one in you here. I know you got this. Now keep in mind, that's something important. Australia, Australia in the house. That's something Australia. important to remember. A coffee master who spent a lot of time on bar in his career before he became a district manager. We've already watched him create the absolutely perfect flat white with the dot on top. You guys remember that. Still, on his first time through the heart, wasn't able to do it. This does take practice. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. But if you use the perfect fundamentals of steaming, the perfect fundamentals of pouring, you will figure this out eventually, I promise. Brookline and Russia in the house. Ooh. Russia, represent. Adam lived in Russia <laughs> for a while. Russia, yeah. ah, all right. Groom that milk. Very nice. All right, milk. Groomed milk is about to marry its bride. Stretto. How much of a difference this makes during my pour, if, if this makes a difference at all. But what you will see me do frequently as I pour is move my pitcher around, right? So as I do this, I'm putting layer of milk underneath every part of the coffee. Uh, I'm making sure that the bottom stays milky and everything rises up to the top evenly. And that way when I come back to the middle, I'm just going to wiggle and I'm going to cut and I'm going to have a nice design on top. So Adam, someone wants to know if you'd answer some questions. Absolutely. So, yeah, so send the questions along if you have any questions and we'll I'll yeah. let them know. And anyone that has questions that they're too shy to ask here, or if you are not watching this live, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, feel free to check out all of our episodes on youtube.com backslash heat1724. Yes, I created that name when I was in high school. Don't judge me for it. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube, I do check my comments. I will respond. Um, and if you want to make suggestions for future videos or anything like that, we will definitely accommodate. What other shapes can you make? Uh, I'm, my best shape is actually the tulip. Um, that's uh, what I typically post on social media the most. I know it's very common for people to say that the rosetta is easier than the tulip. I actually disagree. Um, I've had a lot of difficulty creating a good rosetta. I've only created a few really good rosettas, uh, but I've been able to do some really good tulips. If we end up having time, the next time we do advanced latte art, I will actually do a tulip in a demi tasse cup on a Dopio Espresso with the fancier pitcher. I can't quite do it with our steaming pitcher, but that just goes to show how easy this pitcher is. Um, this pitcher can create latte art so easily that if you pull a solo espresso into a demi tasse cup, you can actually put a tulip design on top of it with these with these mugs. I don't know if this is a real question. Someone wants to know if you can make a square. Is that a real question? <laughs> um, square would be a little have to bit use difficult. A utensil or yeah, huh? um, I've created snowmen with utensils, and what I will say before you start to get frustrated over how many amazing designs you can find on Pinterest and and Instagram and stuff, a lot of people do use instruments to create some of their best latte art. When you see people do cats with whiskers, um, a lot of times you'll see like uh, three-dimensional latte art. These are people that are using instruments to help them create create the. Does it the depend design. solely on the type of pitcher you use? 
not quite. So there's a lot of different factors that go into this. Um, and for the sake of time, I can't talk about every factor. But honestly, I think the most important factor is the milk you use and how you steam the milk. Um, whole milk is the default for a reason. Uh, the 4% fat content and the 3.2% protein content complement very nicely to create a very, very velvety foam mixture. If you've made flat whites in our store for long enough, you know coconut milk doesn't make a good flat white, specifically because the protein content is too low compared to the fat content. Um, soy milk as well has a different ratio of fat to protein. It actually has a higher protein content but a lower fat content. You end up with like a more airy foam. So creating a good dense foam really matters. If you want to make a really fancy latte art, using half and half is actually really good for you. That, that little bit of added fat makes a big difference. Um, as well as the longer you aerate for, the, 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 la the worse the foam is going to be for, for a flat white. Okay. Any other questions coming through? All right. So listen, I promise you, by next month, I will have this heart nailed down. I'm going to figure it out. And then I'm going to give you some more homework. I'll show you the tulip in the rose yes. aisle. And maybe a month later, during district level championships, you'll be able to come back and say, if only I were still an hourly partner, <laughs> I would be Barista Champion. I'll be able to. That's Guys, amazing. I got to tell you, being a Barista Champion, going through that process last summer, was one of the greatest experiences of my life. As stressful as it was to be trying to run a store at the same time that I was going through this process, I'm so grateful to both Adam Wenzel, who helped lead me through it, and Jose Castro, who was my district manager when we first started applications. Jose forced me to do it. He said, Adam, you're going to love it. Just trust me. Just enter, and it'll be worth it. And in the end, it was all definitely worth it. If you're worried about entering a competition, don't be. Seek out advice. Rewatch this video. Watch some more videos and tutorials on YouTube. Practice on every one of your lattes and flat whites that you have in the store. It's a really rewarding experience and it's really going to be worth it. So, Adam, I want to thank you for being on the show hey, man, again. Feel free again. You're Check us out on YouTube. Our previous episode with Adam is up there as well as all the other episodes that we've had. Next week I will be in Cambridge at a special time, 2.30 p.m., not noon. Um, and I will be able to you pull forward a little bit. Um, I'll be in uh, Kendall Square at 2.30 with Damian Waugh, District Manager. We will be tasting Kasi Cielo again. Um, and then I'm going to be focusing on Cambridge for the next month or so. I'll be at Harvard Yard a couple of times. And uh, we're going to have some really cool episodes coming up. So definitely feel free to tune in. And uh, have a great Tuesday, everyone. Thanks, everybody. See you later.